Before we start the program, we have a few announcements to make. I believe we all know of uh, the ongoing situation about the COVID. So we are, we are reminded to observe all the protocols. Uh, that's another way to spacing out and all the protocols as you are aware of. And then also, uh, we, uh, according to the regulations here, we are allowed uh, 45 people at a time in this uh, place. So on the event that we have some people, if we are reach the limit, and we have some people waiting outside also try, wanting to come in, we will kindly have a break, and then uh, we will uh, employ your cooperation with us so that uh, those of us who have been here will uh, step out and give room to those who may also be standing outside trying to come in and uh, to, to mourn and uh, to be with us. So, and, uh, that is what we have. And then tomorrow, as we are all aware of the program, we will be here at uh, 11 o'clock. Is that true? Correct? Tomorrow, 11 o'clock, and then we will have a, a, formal, a formal memorial service. And then after, we will uh, <coughs> proceed for internment. So on behalf of the Amsen family, we just want to thank you for coming tonight. Shall we bow in prayer? Father, we from the evening Thank you. 
believe our gathering here is not strange because uh, a couple of days ago, I believe the unexpected news hit our ears. And many of us were absolutely in disbelief and shock. But then when the, the hours unfolded, the days went by, the reality of it all hit us. And uh, we came to know that, yes, indeed, what we heard was true. And therefore, as we normally do, we are in the process of bidding our brother goodbye. So tonight, we are just here to console ourselves, especially the bereaved family. This is Anderson and Jude. And of course, friends, old time friends and fellow ministers, and indeed all of us here. As we proceed with the program, we will be inviting you to share with us a little bit about your encounter with this great man of God who has fallen asleep. You know, many of us have known him from day one, and I believe if uh, we were to write about him, we will have a whole volume of theses to write. On my part, early this year, I had the opportunity to travel back to Ghana, exactly on the, on the 30th of January. And uh, whilst I was in Ghana, one Sunday after I had finished church, one of our friends by name Reginald Hammer came to pick me from church and on our way to where we were supposed to go, he quickly remembered that uh, the Amsen family was in Ghana and they had called on him. But then he said he had not gotten the chance to go meet them. So instantly we decided, okay, so we can uh, take this time to go meet with them. So we quickly made a U-turn and we drove to their place of uh, residence and lo and behold, we were together, we had uh, that you know, camaraderie, we, we spoke, we did as all time friends would do and uh, we spent some time with uh, them and we left. And then uh, I came back to Canada, but we have not heard about ourselves anymore until this unexpected situation hit us. So we are all at a loss, but we take consolation in the fact that, you know, scripture tells us that people in the, in the state as this, the Bible says, are asleep in the Lord. And so. The word of God is true. We will not mourn as those who have no hope. If we believe that Jesus rose up again, so do we who follow in his steps will also rise up. On the day when the trouble is in grace, I'll see the sound. I'll see
church members called me and said, Auntie Rosie, remember any time Pastor Hamsen has to preach, he asks you to sing this song for, for him. I said, what kind of song was that? He said, he touched me. I said, I have even forgotten. You know, and then I started remembering. I said, oh, any time he will get the puppet to say something, he, he will call. Could you sing this song for me? He touched me. That's how I ran. I knew he loved the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, please, come on. Okay. okay. Um, so, just introduce yourself. Uh, my so. name is Atu Ekufo, and uh, Auntie Sarah is my aunt. Um, she's my dad's younger sister, so um, her nephew. Um, I've, I met him on the first 24th of January, and um, that was the first time at, I saw him face to face. Most of the time was on um, video calls, and um, he spent just 10 days with us in Ghana. The first time I met him, actually, I had to pick them up from the airport, and um, he thanked us so much. Like he was, um, I was surprised at, <laughs> at the way he was amazed. I mean, I'm his nephew. So picking him up is something that he should just uh, he should get on the fingertip. But he was so appreciative and I was amazed. I was even telling my aunties, I'm like, ah, Akito keeps thanking me. And I don't understand. He said, oh, that's how he is. Ten days with Uncle Joe was just amazing. He was always advising us. I remember when Jude had to leave Ghana before then, he was supposed to say a prayer for Jude to go back to Canada. And Uncle Joe ended up praying for the entire family. <laughs> we were like, it's supposed to be a short prayer. But this, Uncle Joe prayed for everybody. Um, trying to, I was trying to get um, short messages from my cousins, that's Jude's cousins, to send to Jude. And everything that everybody wrote was how amazing Uncle Joe was. And um, we thank God for his life. Thank God for the impact that He had on us, and we know He's in a better place now. Thank you. Anybody else? This is the time you will get to pay your last respect and give a tribute about your encounter with Reverend Joe Kaku Amser. Maybe you are still remembering. So we will sing one song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, wash in his blood. Mm -hmm. Blessed assurance. 
to one of our brothers who lives in the States now, and uh, he was telling me, <laughs> so Pastor, I'm saying accuse me of killing the souls. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what he used to say. He would say, I tell him so and so how um, six people is like, welcome. <laughs> 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 and he was telling me, he, said, he, he accused me of killing the souls. I said, oh, you were one of those. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I got so upset, but he didn't care. He just said it you know, as he needed to. Um, for me, he and his wife have been, um, among other people, my cheerleaders when it comes to my faith in the Lord. Um, I've never told them this, but sometimes in my life challenges, I will pick up the phone and call them. I don't say what I'm going through, I don't say anything, but by the time I hang up the phone, I feel so encouraged. Um, from the time they left all nations, every time I called them, the only thing we spoke about was our lives and just the faith. And you always say, Ajua, misrunya miu, misrunya. And that's how he lived his life, with the fear of God. And he just inspires me to live mine the same. One thing I can also say about him is my experience he loved, he genuinely loved people. He just wanted everyone around him to feel good. He walks into either my house or wherever he meets my oldest daughter, and he will say, Christine. These are the people that he viewing now. Beautiful. He just knows also how to make him feel good. Expressing the, the social distancing, which is very really unique here in Toronto. of God, um, I think it was in 1989, it didn't take uh, long for me to connect with him. And I think the thing that really attracted him to me was his passion for the Lord. He really had a deep heart for God. So along the way as we kept going, as Santistella was saying, he was uh, the um, touch pastor for the downtown Scarborough 
East area, and we were members of that district. And he worked passionately for God. He worked passionately for God. He loved God with all of his heart. We went on, we became family members. So for him, me, I only know him as uncle. I didn't even add the Joe. Whenever I met him, uncle. He was in our house many times with my husband. Um, we were a family. And uh, when Auntie um, Sally also came, you know, she joined in. Auntie was actually with us in our house until uh, after the wedding when uh, they moved to their own place. And I'm not sure if any of you sitting here actually knew that my uh, Ghana day of birth name, that I, I don't remember him calling or addressing me as Stella. He always called me Ama. So we really, really bonded together. And uh, I know that I'm going to really, really miss him. When uh, they moved on to other places, the uh, connection wasn't as active as it used to be, but we were always family. Each time we met anywhere, that passionate smile, the look, the happiness in his face to see us was just beyond talking about now. And um, he served the Lord with all of his heart. There was nothing that would come between him and his service for God. He served God with all of his mind, with all of his soul, with all of his strength. Every fiber that was in him was thrown to the service of God. And I know that those of us that were in the district at the time, you know, were blessed and lifted up in the faith and in our walk with God, with his service, and how he mobilizes people. He will pray very passionately. He's the only one I know that will call you on the phone and cancel through you or talk about the things of God. He will still be sleeping and he's still praying. <laughs> right? But I really, really loved Uncle. I loved him with all of you know my heart. He was very, very dear to us, my husband and myself, and, and the children. We became family. And uh, I thank God for knowing him and uh, for bringing him and uh, the, the family also into our lives. Thank you. Thank you. On Ishing in 1989, the first day I stepped there, he came to me and looked at me and he said, you hear? I said, yes. I didn't know him, but he said that. So after the service came to tell me that, you know, they have been praying for me. I used to attend an Anglican church, but a friend of mine was in the church, so I guess he told him about me. And I became like his bodyguard. Wherever we go, we went to so many places, going to Windsor Church or to buy chicken and all that. But we also were in the same ministry. Every ministry that he headed, from the counseling to whatever ministry, I was with the, in the ministry with him. He has blessed my life so much. This man of God loved prayers. And you will never, he, we had some our moment, you know, sometimes you'll be fighting and then we will come back on calls and he will be laughing. Sometimes when you are down, he will encourage you. He is a true man of God. And Sometimes it's just hard to describe such a man. I never call him pastor, you know. In 1980, around that time, he was a deacon, so I always called Deacon Joe, Deacon Joe. And even though I am his younger brother, he will call me brother, brother young and all that kind of stuff. I love this man so much that sometimes when... Um, I ponder over certain things and, you know, during his wedding time, I helped out and, you know, some of the uh, catering and all that. And you know that this man 
anytime you will speak to me, he will keep thanking me about the effort that I put in and all that. He will never stop thanking you. A very little thing is so much appreciative of stuff. That's why, you know, he loved God. Because anyone who appreciates stuff is of God. I am very, very, very grateful to God with my encounter with this great man of God. I know that um, he is like the bosom of our, our Father, but his work keep marching on. I know that. He's labored a lot. He's won souls. And I know that he has a big crown laid down for him. Thank you. Amen. One thing I know also about Gabriel Hamsen, you know, he always find a situation, a point, you know, to to strike a relationship with you. A point in particular was uh, the late uh, Jemima. I believe most of us knew her. Reverend Amsen called Jemima Mama. He considered her as her mother. Why? Because he said that his mom's name was Jemima. So for him, he always will look for something by which he will make a connection or a relationship with you. And this is uh, something which is worthy of emulation. We thank God for his life. Amen. <laughs> Who am I going to joke around with? He was truly man of God. He prayed for me one day. I was really sick. I had a heart surgery. When my husband told him about it, he came. And he prayed for me. And I turned my foot. And I got healed. I thank God so much for the relationship we have. It's more than a friend. We were a family, a very strong family. And we've been there for each other. I want to thank God for his service to Christ. I have no doubt that in the person of Christ. I thank God for his life. He will pray with us and the children. And we will pray with him. I thank God for him. <laughs>
Okay guys, I think everything else is over, so I'm going to be walking outside, so just follow me. Okay, you guys, this is the Bible Church Church of Christ. I'll talk to you later, bye.